right off the bat, I just want to explain that I'm as you may notice, a middle-class white guy. Uh, so the yes, all women slash not all men conversation is not one that I'm uh, necessarily, it's difficult for me to, I don't know, not and explain things away. Uh, so I'm gonna attempt to just kind of leave it at the surface uh, observation. And as you also may have noticed, I am not Islamic or Muslim uh, or part of that community at all. And so I can't speak with any authority on that nature either. I'm just looking at the trends and the, the hashtags themselves from an outsider's perspective. So with that being said, uh, let's move on. How are the not all men hashtags and not in my name hashtags different? Right on the surface, they both share some commonalities. They're both born out of a fear that a very minute uh, minority of a population would represent the whole of a population and uh, and so they're a reaction to that fear or that uh, or that feeling so there was an article written in slate when the yes all women slash not all men hashtags were trending uh, back a couple of months ago a couple of the screenshots I'll share with you now and I would just like to um, again this is difficult for me because I don't want I very much believe that uh, Daesh and groups like it do not represent the Muslim and Islamic communities as a whole and so I don't want that impression to be given at all whatsoever uh, but the superficially and the 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 I just I, I can't stop thinking about this and I would like for someone smarter than me or someone uh, better than me without the biases that I have to help me to understand uh, how these are different and uh, and how it's helpful to have these kind of hashtags going. With that being said, so there was a couple of, um, I'll just share a couple of screenshots here um, on the screen that you can see. Um, one says, uh, you know, no hashtag, not all men are violent against women, but hashtag yes, all women have to navigate a world in which uh, those who are look the same as those who aren't. It's very easy for me at this particular moment to think about the refugee crisis in the European Union and think about that tweet specifically in that same context, right? Yes, we know that not all Muslims and those in the Islamic world are terrorists or part of Daesh. In fact, most of the people coming from Syria and the Islamic world, refugees that are coming into the European Union are in fact fleeing from groups like that. And so that is, I think, primarily where our concern should be, is making sure that they're safe and they feel secure. But uh, it's very easy for me to, to imagine that right now people in France um, and in places like Kenya, where there was another attack by another uh, group, um, that they feel this way. Right? They feel afraid because that is, in fact, the goal of a, of a group like Daesh, that they want to instill fear for the Islamic world as a whole so that they can further their narrative of a, of a Western or Christian uh, persecuting um, force that, that then they can rally around and, and create their power. Right? That's part of their narrative. Uh, it's one of the reasons they instill terrorism, or they instill terror, uh, is because it, it it reinforces what they they've been preaching, right? So I think it's important for us to understand how, uh, I you know I, I don't even know I don't know what is important here. I, I just I'm I'm realizing I really am just looking for input and help to understand uh, where to go next. So I think I'm just gonna actually finish this video right here with with sort of an open ended uh, help me. <laughs> I would like to have a conversation and figure out where, uh, I don't know, how to process these feelings of, um, I mean, racism. Honestly, it's a, there's a bit of racism there. Again, I don't feel as a whole that groups that are causing these terrorism organizations represent the Islamic world any more than Timothy McVeigh represented the American people or the, the Christian world. Um, how do I feel compassion for um, the Islamic world that is not part of this? And how do I 
um, at the same time, uh, sympathize and connect with those who are actually living in day-to-day -day fear because they cannot differentiate between those uh, Muslims and people in the Islamic world who are um, not part of this very, 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 very small minority and those that are. Um, because when they look the same, like warfare is different. Um, and, and it's hard to, I think, navigate that as a person who may live in fear. I, I don't live in fear. Um, I live in America. I live in a tiny small town in Florida, which I don't have to experience this sort of fear on a day-to-day -day basis. But someone who lives in Paris right now is definitely living in a scary environment. People who live in Syria definitely live in a very scary environment. And I don't understand what that's like. I can't even begin to understand what that's like. But I want to know how to have empathy and compassion for all of those people, while at the same time being able to condemn the actions of terrorists. So I don't know if there's a question in there, but I hope that there's more conversation to be had. Um, I was going to talk about truth and politics and this whole Donald Trump thing and whatever, but I felt like this is way more important and uh, maybe we'll get back to that at some point at a later date. I just think this is more important and, and more, um, yeah, it's just on my mind more. So anyway, thanks for watching.